-hmm. Let's talk about some freedom moves on today. You guys see in the title, it says, what is your objective in your business? Is it to survive or is it to thrive? I want to talk about that. I remember listening to um, a YouTube video where uh, a, a lady was talking about how she had all these things that she wanted to do in her life and one day she just decided so she travels around the world and she just created the lifestyle that she loved and one particular program her mom was on talking and sharing as well and her mom <clears throat> her mom talked about well first of all her mom what she did for a living was work with elderly people and so over the years she had asked many of the elderly people a question like to have come to this beautiful ripe mature age what are some things that you regret that did not happen or did not occur in your life and 90 percent of the people told her the older people in their 80s and 90s that they regretted not doing the things that would have helped them to achieve some of their goals, their life goals, um, whether it was traveling or um, changing jobs, you know, wanting to experience life different. The bulk of the people shared their regret for not having done some of the things they wanted to do and some of the goals. And I was thinking about that this morning, mainly because I work with um, people to help them build their business. Let me do a quick introduction while we're at it. So I'm Tanya Wilson, master life and business coach, and I help women just like you step into their personal power, scale their businesses to six and multiple six figures, and create a lifestyle that they love. And so this perspective that I'm hearing as the woman and her mom are sharing, of course, it, it touches home with me because I have so many people reach out to me in their business who um, have waited and they had things that they wanted to do and then they find themselves in a place where they kind of feel trapped like they don't have an option number one is never too late for a fresh start but I understand how that mindset can continue to settle in and I believe a lot of it is because we don't have clear objectives as it relates to our business. And this is what I mean. So oftentimes we open the business and the goal is I'm gonna make a lot of money and I'm gonna do all the different things, but there isn't like this clear objective that we're tapped into, that we're locked into. I remember when I was maybe about 28, I told myself, I said, I'm retiring at 35. Now I didn't retire at 35 from what I was doing. And then I made a new goal that I wasn't going to have to do what I used to do, which was trading my time for dollars by the time I reached 40. I did meet that goal. But somewhere between 28 and 35, it dawned on me that retiring was impossible. Now, you guys rarely hear me say the word impossible. But the reason that it was impossible, because my idea of getting to that place was simply doing the same thing that I was all already doing, just doing it harder. And... Is I'm just one person. So no matter how hard I worked, um, doing it the way that I was currently doing it, I just wasn't going to get to that goal. When I tapped into a new level of abundance, that became really, um, I became really aware of the way that I was doing it was not going to get me at my goal. Number one, I didn't, I wasn't, locked into a real vision at that time again my vision was to retire but I wasn't locked in because it would have provided different avenues it would have told me that I probably would have needed to be doing um, something similar to what I'm doing now or even in my pricing the prices and things that I had at that time it's just I couldn't have done enough work to retire in that shorter amount of time doing things the way that I was currently doing them and so because this is my heart like i've had several conversations over the last few weeks with people who have been doing what they've been doing for a really long time and they're tired and that that tiredness that energy it creates a barrier to them even feeling like they're going to have the energy to do what's necessary to transition into something different 
and it, it literally breaks my heart because I understand that time continues to do what God has assigned time to do or what we've created time to do. It continues to go on. It continues to move. And so I wanted to talk to you today about like, what is your objective in your business? Is it to survive at the level that you're on or is it to thrive? There, there was a time where um, I was always hearing people saying, you know, their goal was to be the best. And I remember saying to myself, well, you know, I don't necessarily want to be the best because I'm not in this to compete with other people. And, you know, I don't want to be the best business and put other people out of business because those are the things that you would hear. Do you want to be the best? Do you want to put your competition out of business? And I was like, no, that's not my goal. That's not my desire. So because of that, I never latched on. Well, at that time, I didn't latch on to being the best. But when I tapped into a new space of abundance, being the best became my objective. Y'all got to hear me on this, right? When I learned that being the best didn't mean I was competing with anyone else. It didn't mean anybody else was going out of business. It didn't mean any of those things because being the best for me was being the best coach for my perfect people. That's a completely different story right because only i god has designed me for my perfect people he has designed what is on the inside of me specifically for those people that i'm called to serve specifically for those people who my journey my experience what i've done what i've cultivated what i've learned what i've developed is for them and when i made being the best my objective it changed everything so being the best meant that I would be consistently doing this thing that I do. Now, I want you to hear me because you also know I don't believe in hustling, right? What I'm talking about, the consistency in it, isn't about hustling. It's about being, right? And being is who you are irregardless. It's something that you cultivate where you are the most ideal candidate for your perfect people. Now, here's the, the next thing. If you don't know who your perfect people are, that's an issue. And your perfect people can change over time. My perfect people continue to evolve, right? So there was a time where I was helping people at lower levels of developing their business. Then it changed. And now I'm at a space where I'm helping people who are not just interested because I've had tons of people over the years who were interested in growing their business. Those were the people who connected with me five years ago and never moved on it and to this day are still find themselves in the same position who may still have the same desire. They're interested in growing their business. My perfect people now are people who are committed. So they're different. They do things completely different. When they get strategy, they do the strategy. When they see an opportunity aligned with where it is they desire to go, they move on it, right? So it's, it's a completely different energy and so your perfect people can change but you still have to know who your perfect people are and so many people start their business without a clear objective so the working hard is not a clear objective because we know a lot of people who work really hard some work two and three jobs who never get to those levels in life that they desire they never 3x that income that they wanted they never reach those six and multiple six figure goals, although they are consistently doing their work, but they're consistently doing the same thing. They're operating from the space of surviving at the level that they're on and not thriving. And it's a completely different energy. You move completely different. Here are some of the reasons or some of the things distractions i'm going to just call them that here are some distractions that will keep you in survival mode and not thriving mode in your business number one everyday life the distraction of everyday life if you allow it will keep you in the state of surviving at the level that you're on meaning you're making money but you're not getting to the point that you desire to get to you're not creating the 
disposable income. That's that income over the bills, over the necessities, over the regular things. You're not creating that disposable income that creates the experiences and the desires that you have. Everyday life can be a distraction. Here's what I mean by this. Sometimes people decide whether they're going to make their move by, I just had car trouble. My children need something right now. I get it. Listen, I mean, more than you probably would ever imagine, I get it. But at the same time, life is always going to present an opportunity for you to have to move your attention somewhere else. But how long you stay there is what makes the difference. If that survival, because that's when you're in survival mode, I'm creating what I need to create to survive the stuff that life throws at me. But when you're in thriving mode, you move differently. You look at opportunity completely different. You understand that if I continue to do things the same way I've always done them, the same way I'm doing things now, I can only create the same results that I'm creating now. I hope this is making sense. And thriving means that you have to quantum leap, number one, in your belief, number two, in your faith, number three, in your action. You have to do a thriving action. So for me, being the, be the best coach, the best consultant for my perfect people means I'm always doing actions that are from a space of thriving, not just surviving at the level that I'm on, which means I'm doing things differently, which means I'm taking inspired action, which means sometimes I get a nudge that is, it feels illogical. It's like, but right now, like while this is going on, like it doesn't make sense. But if you continue to do what makes only what makes sense, only what your natural eyes can see, you will create the same results that you've created up until this point because you've done logical things. You can think back to the times where you did some illogical things and you're like, man, if I hadn't made that move. And you got to find a space in your energy where you can flow like that. That's what this next level requires. So one distraction is everyday life life is going to continue to life like that part is not going to change if you are allowing that to be the determining factor of when you make a move or whether or not you make a move for what it is that you said you desire yes you will continue to be in survival mode at the level that you're on you're creating money you're creating time freedom for the level that you're on the second distraction is randomness randomness I see it all the time. People open a business and every move that they make is random. Different from the inspired action that I spoke about. It's random. And random can get you some money. It can get you some money. But it doesn't guarantee growth or consistency. Definitely not scaling from a place of randomness. From a place of doing everything that you know to do that's still not yielding the results that you desire the second distraction is randomness. The third distraction is lack of structure and organization. Listen, even my routine, you guys may have seen me talk about a video called um, your routine that makes you brilliant. Even my routine that makes me brilliant has to have some structure and organization because it keeps me at a certain vibration. It keeps me at a certain energy. It keeps me in a certain state of mind. There are tons of you know, external factors that can throw you off. But if you have structure and organization, you then create a foundation to be able to hold all of that stuff you're wanting to call in. You're wanting to triple your income. That either means more clients or you increasing your value. Either way, it's more weight on the, the organizational structure that you currently have. Is your business set up for it? Is your life set up for it? There's so many things we say we de desire, but are we even in a position to handle it when it comes in? So distract, one distraction can be the lack of structure and organization in your big business if you're all over the place, if your hands are in everything, if you don't have systems that can handle some of the heavy uh, lifting and loading for you, you will create um, survival tactics. It's like, okay, I've done this, and I got all of this going on, but now I got to get my way out of it because I made this mistake or I made that mistake. Does it make sense? 
So perfecting your structure and your organizational systems is going to help you move into a place of thriving. If you're looking to scale, you need structure, you need organization. It's a distraction when you lack that. It's a distraction. The fourth one is no vision. And this kind of goes back to your objective. This kind of goes back to when I said I wanted to retire at 35. I didn't, a vision is something that has goals and strategies and dates and time frames and all of those things, strategies, not just something that we're saying that we desire. I hope this is making sense. That's the fourth distraction, no vision. Inside 3D Success Academy, it is the reason why it is the very first module. Because everything that you do from that point needs to make sense so that it's in alignment with the vision. Number four, this is the fourth distraction, little faith. O ye of little faith, according to your measure of faith. Listen, I hope that hit home. I felt that when I said it. According to your measure of faith. So you will yield your thriving result according to your measure of faith. And what faith looks like as an entrepreneur is calculated risk. That's what faith looks like. And so here are five distractions that keep you operating from a place of survival, surviving on the level that you're on, even if you're making money um, at this point, and it's fairly decent money, but you have a bigger goal. You have bigger dreams and desires. You want to step into another level of abundance. What you're doing now is from a place of surviving at the level that you're on. If you do those things and you get repeat results, does that make sense? And so here are five distractions that keep you in that space and keep you from the space of actually thriving. Number one is everyday life. It becomes a distraction if you don't develop the, the fortitude within, the resilience within to be able to say, yes, I do have this transpiring, but my vision is here. And so the moves that I make that are bigger than, the, than these distractions that are going on, those moves are automatically going to cover these other life distractions that normally happen to everybody. But when you step over into thriving, you just handle them with a lot more ease. If you 3x your income, some of those things that are happening can be solved with money instead of your time. Listen, second thing, randomness in your business is a distraction. Thirdly, lack of structure and organization. It is a distraction from your next level because it makes you all over the place. It doesn't allow you to get tapped in the way you fully need to be tapped in in order to really thrive. Number four, no vision. I know. We say this is my vision, but a dream and a vision are two different things. A dream is still in your head. It's in your thoughts with 50 to 70,000 other thoughts you're thinking every day. Did you guys know we think 50 to 70 thoughts per day? If your vision doesn't have a level of clarity to it with dates and goals and strategy, then it's still a dream because it's still in your head with all those other thoughts. How on earth do you get tapped in? So no vision. And then lastly, the last distraction is little faith. According to your measure of faith, you're going to have to up level your faith. This next season is about your ability to trust. Number one, to trust yourself, to know I'm going to make this. This is different. I did a broadcast on fixed mindset and growth mindset. But I know that I can learn this. I know that I can calibrate to a new level where that becomes a normalcy for me. So that's my, my take on today. What is your objective in your business? You need an objective, guys. Listen, and I, this last thought here, ladies, and now this is my experience. How many of you have experienced this in your dating life? If you're married now, even when you were dating before, you can kind of think back on it. So in my dating life, I've met men who, um, they work, all, all the men would work, but what they did in their extra time was completely different. So I met men that um, all of their time was tied to sports, watching sports, 
betting on sports, you know, maybe like the fantasy um, football thingy, um, all of their free time, that's what they dedicated their free time to. And they did okay in life. And then I met men who, it's not that they didn't like sports. It's not that they wouldn't catch a game here or there. It's not that they couldn't even have a conversation with other men about sports, but that's not what they did with their, their free time. They were learning something related to their purpose. They were doing something that was in alignment with their vision. A completely different set of actions in their life. They were so tapped in to their assignment and their purpose and many of them were multiple, multiple six-figure earners and even million-dollar earners. And that's where the line, when I would look at the heart of the man may be similar, right? But the level of success, the level of um, opportunities and experiences that they had in their life, it was determined by what their focus was on. And many of them daily worked on their routine that made them brilliant. Whereas some of the other guys, maybe their focus was to club or to party or, you know, to talk to as many girls as possible. It, it, you could just see the difference. You know, so I'll be fair, you know, maybe with us as women, we want to be on the set of every, um, everything that's going on, you know, every baby shower, every whatever the thing may be. But the women whose lives were turning out different, they just had a different level of focus and intention about their business. And what you must understand is that your business is the vehicle for all of those things that you say you desire. It, it's your business. And so if you're going to put any energy, energy, time, money, resources into anything, it will be what you need to do to cultivate your business what you need to do to cultivate who you are so that you can be the person who can handle the business at that level. So what is your objective in your business? Is it to survive at the level that you're on or is it to thrive? That's my take on today. Um, two things. Number one, 3D Success Academy. Um, it is the ultimate growth track and I actually have an opportunity. For those of you who are serious, direct message me. I'm going to do something special for those who direct message me. Other than that, the link is going to be in the comments. Secondly, I have one more space available for those of you who need to identify who your perfect people are. So you can stop throwing spaghetti on the wall or posting things and hoping that the right person just happens to see them instead of having a message, crafting your message and your intentions so that it attracts your perfect people, right? So you go from chasing to attracting and you get to the things that you're wanting to do and the increase in your income that you're wanting to have and the number of people that you're wanting to help quicker, sooner, faster. I have one space left um, that's available for you to work with me privately to identify who your perfect people are. It is a 14 day time frame where we work on defining that, defining your message and all the things so that you understand when you are talking about the great things that you do and the services that you offer that you're speaking to your perfect people. That's my take. You guys have a good one. Listen, do something today that the highest version of you would do. Not the version of you that is in surviving on the level that you're on, but that version of you that would be thriving. What would she do today? What decision? What's one decision you can make today that would be in alignment with that highest version?